Hello everyone, thanks for being here for what is supp supposed to be a quite relaxed um, format with that... Um, uh, relaxed, but the name is Love and Hate, so it's not such a relaxed format. It might not be not that relaxed. Um, my name is Alex Maout. Um, I've been working in the music business for 15 years and uh, in film and TV music for 12 years, working for Europa Corp. It's the, um, it's the first European new movie studio as a head of the music department. Um, I worked on several movies such as um, the Taken series with Liam Neeson or um, Lucy, uh, directed by Luc Besson, um, and more recently um, Valerian and the City of the Thousand Planets with um, a great composer, um, Alexandre Pla. Uh, almost as great as um, Evgeny Galperin, who is going to introduce so you himself. You start with hate, okay. Um, yes, I am Evgeny Galperin. Uh, I am a composer, um, working in duet, duo with my brother Sasha, who is not here. Um, and we're scoring uh, many international films. We live in, Fra in France, in Paris, but scoring uh, uh, as well American f movies. Recently, HBO films uh, um, with the director Barry Levinson, The Wizard of Lies and uh, Paterno. The first is from with Robert De Niro, and uh, the second one with Al Pacino. We're working on um, commercial cinema, like large audience cinema, uh, and also very art house cinema. It's maybe one of the interesting points we will discuss later. Uh, um, an example of uh, art house cinema, it's, uh, it can be Loveless, the film uh, by Andrei Zvagintsev, recently nominated for foreign language film for Oscars. Uh, and many others, of course, uh, we don't have to, too much time to speak about all of it. And uh, the idea, or the start of our discussion today, is the relationship between the composer and producer, and the director, this triangle uh, relationship, uh, in both uh, more uh, mainstream cinema and art house cinema, what, 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 is, like, what is the difference, what is the difficulty, uh, etc. Yes, indeed, and um, we we are here together on the on the say this stage because we we've worked together. So I assume the medium thought it would be a good idea to share. Our experience. We loved and hate. Yes, together we, we yeah. had arguments, um, and as Evgeny is Russian, I was kind of very scared of him because he he's very strong and powerful. So I fear I, I feared him a lot. And basically, this is very interesting because uh, when you are on the producer side, you kind of sometimes fear um, the composer for a very simple reason, because um, amongst all the jobs in the cinema uh, industry, the music is a little bit on the side. It's the only one where the director might not understand what it is about. A DOP, he understands what it's about. An editor, he understands what it's about. You cannot, as an editor, as a DOP, you cannot bullshit the director. As a, as a composer, you may be able to a little bit bullshit. Uh, typically, producers yeah. talk. Uh, uh, <laughs> they always scared the composer will shitting on, the, on them. Yes, uh, what is true is that the musician is coming from a different world. I think that in cinema industry, it's the only one, uh, the only ones who are starting in the world of music uh, and then come in the world of cinema. So they're a little bit like um, uh, immigrants. Uh, and for me, as a Russian, it was a second immigration because I was... Um, uh, yes, I moved from Russia to, to Paris. So when you come to a new country or to, to a new world, of course, the first thing you have to learn the language. Uh, uh, and to make the collaboration uh, be um, possible and also positive, I think that uh, the composers has to understand the uh, purpose, not only artistic, but also 
financial purpose uh, of the project and be able to uh, adapt in, in different situations because in the mainstream cinema the producer is um, very present in the process, uh, a real part of the process and the art cinema, the discussion is only artistic, you never speak really fin fin finance, you only speak about the vision and trying to be on the same wave as the, with the director, but also this not so. Uh, this point is also difficult because speaking about the vision uh, between a director who doesn't know anything about the music and the composer who is coming from this world, you have to find the common language, and this language has to be extremely simple uh, and um, it has to be done with very simple words like uh, sad, happy, uh, slow, fast. Like you, you, you have to translate all the emotions and. Uh, um, like spiritual thing in very simple words otherwise the discussion will be very difficult and certainly uh, stopped very quickly you, you, you're right and also there's a word you you didn't mention but it's the word trust I mean but you were talking about financial issues also because um, in my job when I come to you and I ask if you would be kind enough to compose the music for one of our movies um, Obviously, you say yes. Of course, it depends on the budget. <laughs> but um, no, but then um, f on the producer side, the composer um, has also to be an ally because he has an artistic bond with the director, which is obviously the most important, which is the most important thing. Ho however, um, the way, I, at least this is the way I see it, but may maybe you might not be you might not agree with me, the way the composer composes the music will influence how much it costs. Um, if the composer proposes to the director a huge music with a hundred musicians and you need like three sessions of 12 hours, it will cost thousands of euros. Um, maybe, and it will influence, it may influence the way the the way it feels for the director. So um, this is a very, a very subtle, um, a very subtle um, agreement to find between um, satisfying artistically the director, which is the most important thing, but it has to be feasible money-wise. Um, I always say that my job has three goals. I have at the end of a movie to deliver a hard drive with a music which is legally um, we can be le legally exploited, financially in the boundaries that my um, producer gave me, and artistically that satisfies the, the director. And f for that, I need you uh, also to understand me when I tell you, you know, maybe on this particular music, I would need fewer musicians. Do you think, and but it, ethically speaking, uh, you cannot tell to you the director, or oh, I cannot propose you something else because the music supervisor asked me to do so. So it's 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 very subtle, no? Don't you think? Yes, uh, of course. The, the budget is very important, and uh, I think that uh, it can it, it have to be extremely open, uh, an open discussion between the composer, the director, and the producer. And if the director is asking for something undoable with uh, the budget of the film, uh, I think that the composer is the the first person who say, who need to say, you need to speak with the producer about what you want because what you want is much more costly. Uh, much more expensive than with the budget we have um, and in general the person who need to have this discussion is the director not the composer because we are not deciding um, who, how big the budget will be it's between the director and between the producer yes but you cannot pretend it doesn't exist that there's no budget boundaries for instance it is not it may not be the first um, the, the the first item on the agenda, but you cannot act. No, no, absolutely. No, no, no. I, I think that you have to discuss with the producer and the director and ask them 
uh, to make them being aware about the problem which can come because the demand is not proportional to the budget and then the discussion happened between the producer and between the director because the director is the only one who can say uh, I really need it uh, uh, and uh, maybe to deal with the producer saying okay if you cannot uh, give me that maybe you take that you give me to, to really to deal to discuss uh, uh, and it's not the role of the composer the role of the composer is just to advise and to tell uh, be careful here we are not going uh, to stay in the budget and artistically way um, uh, because the budget is not the only thing uh, of course uh, how the discussion start because when you're coming from music industry and you um, so you are committed to do something and uh, you have to please uh, the director and the producer also the distributor who can be also co-producer sometimes so a lot of people more the movie is expensive more it's about being a men's mainstream more people are involved involved in the decision so, so you're more comfortable with uh, uh, art house working in the art house movie no I, it's, I think it's not about comf comfort I think that I love to have the liberty of the music language which is possible in art house movie you can two, two films too many together <laughs> And um, and anyway, the the it was what we can say it was a mainstream movie. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it was supposed to be. Ba basically, there were there were yeah, there were some um, there were a lot of stake because there's a lot of of money at stake also. So um, uh, in my mind, there were a lot of pressure uh, maintaining the budget. Of course, of course. Do you think that when you're doing art house movie, uh, there's not this pressure? Uh, I think that uh, for, for me actually I like the bo doing both. Uh, it's There's no it, pressure money wise on. Uh, I think that you have a lot of pressure uh, in art, art house films. You have a lot of artistic pressure because if you are working with a great and demanding director, uh, he he is expanding something very particular from you. It's not like a, just an average work. So it has to be something new, something very subtle, uh, not common. Uh, and uh, more the director is famous and more his vision, vision is uh, uh, strong, more he will expect from you. In, our art, in commercial films the pressure is different. It's uh, to make the music being as efficient as possible and if you can also make something fresh and not too banal, not too expected. So you think we are um, uh, putting away from your originality when we are doing mainstream movies? No. Because we we put what we call time score in the editing, which means pre-existing music, just to give you a hint about what we would like you to do, but obviously... No, no. You're not taking from me something, because I accept a, uh, accepting a commercial film or mainstream film on purpose, because I like it, and what I like about it, it's the fact that the music will be very effective, very... Uh, um, very um, consistent with a lot of musician and um, melodic. You, you, I will be able to use big orchestra to play with big orchestra to mix electronic with this uh, to make some melody uh, which people can remember. Uh, remember, uh, and it's very exciting work. It's just a very different work. So if I'm going to a mainstream film, I'm not going to uh, with the hope to make my own language and. To, to, to propose something absolutely uh, new and being frustrated because nobody uh, will give me the chance to do it. Uh, uh, you have to understand uh, the difficulty of it and what these people are asking from you. And what you can do is something fresh and something uh, subtle, but very f but the efficiency is the main word, I think. Uh, and uh, you also know that you will not respond only to the director. With Luc Besson is different because he's producer and he's a very powerful man and he decides He's the only one who decides, actually. But uh, in a lot of cases, you have distributors, you have producers, you have a board who, who can uh, who, who can be involved. So it's just a different kind of work, and um, uh, we a diplomatic work. It's a more dip diplomatic work, of course. It's also um, to understand that people in front of you are putting a lot of money. They expect a lot of money, and uh, it's more like a craft work. 
it's very and it's very interesting too because uh, craft is the base of our like uh, our industry and also music industry uh, without craft i think the artistic thing cannot really exist so just another aspect and uh, to find this language you can speak with each other if you want we can switch to the temp music maybe uh, and to briefly explain what it is. So, temp music, I don't know if you know uh, what it's about. It's when the movie is being edited. The director and the editor put some music from other films to help the edit and also to help the screenings uh, to the distributors, to the other producers, uh, to, to understand the movie. Because without a movie, for example, an action film or a comedy film without music, there's no rhythm. In the it's, it's 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 just impossible to, to watch. When you want to show, for instance, when when you when you are building a movie, editing a movie, uh, if you want to show it to the marketing team so they can work uh, in advance on the poster, on the advertisement, on the trailer, they have to see the movie to to see how it goes. But if there's no music at all in the movie they're seeing, it will they might not feel well about it. So we waiting for this guy because this guy always takes his time we you put pre-existing movie uh, you you put pre-existing music in the movie and you edit um, music from the dark knight or uh, whatever um, avengers or whatever and yeah, yes. very often the, these guys uh, because uh, they have a lot of ego they are not happy about it because uh, they say okay so you okay you use mm. something else than my my music and you you are the only one to have egos in this industry no but you're, you 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 have to you're right um, but anyway so uh, sometimes the composer doesn't feel very comfortable because he says, okay, you've just asked me to score a, mo a, a movie and all of a sudden you are delivering to me a movie which is already scored with other composer. Do you really need me? Um, and sometimes it's useful because it gives uh, a path to follow for you. Um, the, 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 basically, when you have a scene, an action scene with a slow motion, you can put uh, hard rock music or you could put a Mozart song and it can work, but it's just not the same feeling. Actually, it, 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 the music is a very good start for the discussion because if you start with nothing, if it's just page blank, it's very difficult because it's wide open and uh, you can try hundreds of different ways to score and lose a lot of time. So it's very good uh, thing to start but it can be also very dangerous because if the composer original composer will just copy uh, he will always make something make something less good than the temp because copy never uh, never gives something better than the original we have some exception maybe picasso but uh, who was a very good copyist and always uh, copied better than the originals but uh, we are not all picassos so it's a good start to understand what is the direction as alex was saying uh, for example is it a mix of electronic and uh, uh, orchestral music is it uh, something very minimal um, is it something very rich uh, is it uh, something closer to electronical music or pop music whatever um, I think that uh, the discussion is very easy on mainstream films when the, with the temp because it saves a lot of time to, to everyone and then it's the role of composer to explain what can what he can make better than the temp uh, how the music can be more efficient also more personal to the film to, to have more identity to, 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 um, for this particular film and uh, I think that uh, here comes uh, the fact that you have to know cinema you have to not only uh, be a fantastic musician you also have to be a cinema lover to see a lot of films to analyze not without, without uh, like making big uh, articles about it but just uh, to try to understand um, the multiple uh, possibilities with the score to help the film uh, to help the story to uh, to help the dramaturgy of the film there's a lot of psychology also yeah, I mean for instance as you know um, at Europa Corp when we are um, making a movie um, there is no music that can which can reach that can reach the, the editing room without my consent it's not because 
I want to control everything and that, or I'm a control well, freak. No, it's not about that. It, it's, it's, it's because um, I want to avoid frustration for the director. A very simple example, the, the, the simplest example ever. I was working on this Luc Besson film called Arthur and the Invisibles, Arthur and Ellie Minimoys, and um, um, someone in the editing room thought it would be a good idea in a very fun scene to put a Michael Jackson song in the movie. This, 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 this was a great idea because obviously, uh, who can beat Michael? And I mean, but however, uh, unfortunately, the song was not, couldn't be clear at all on any circumstances. So what I had, I had the director very frustrated, frustrated because he saw the movie for like one month with this song, and it was like a very a huge struggle to find something to change this song, which anyway should not have been in the movie ever and and it can be the same with you if i know that i have a very small budget and i can do only like quatuor quatuor accord uh, quartets that kind of stuff and in the temp music of the movie you have to avoid to use big orchestras from dark course, night or something otherwise yeah. the director when he hears your music he mm -hmm. said but evgeny is doing very small things. What what are you doing with one violin? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, it's true. It, it's it's a one of the danger of the bad temp music because it's not related at all to the budget, and the director is asking you to do something which was done with one million budget and uh, one month of, of producing recording. So of course it's a part of the discussion, and this is the role mostly of the supervisor. It's true. Uh, because if the composer says no to the director, it's always very frustrating, and uh, the reason can be more better explained, I think, by, by the supervisor. The other danger is just that even if it's not Michael Jackson, and uh, it's just some music uh, used for months as, as a temp music, the director, yes, the director and the editor get so used to it, so it's very difficult for them to replace it. Not because the composer is not good. But all just the fact that yeah, they live with, with this music for months, they work with it, it's emotionally, uh, they're very attached emotionally to this score. So how to explain, uh, how to make them understand that they have to uh, forget about it and to try to understand something new. Uh, sometimes the composer is not good. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, um, so I think it's the role of the composer to make them understand what is not working in the, in the stamp. Because it's really rare to find a perfect stamp music. It happens, and sometimes when it happens, I am the first one to suggest to buy the rights of this uh, cue. Because if something is perfect, it's uh, always frustrating to try to replace it. And uh, um, my cue was also sometimes used like a temp music. And uh, several times I was approached by the company, Lionsgate, uh, for example, for Hunger Games, who wanted to buy a cue because it was so perfect. It was done for a very little, uh, extremely poor French art house film, uh, recorded in, in maybe five minutes with a French singer of mine. And the editor of Hunger Games used this cue on the opening scene of Hunger Games and uh, all of a sudden there was a kind of miracle because it was absolutely perfect. If I was committed to, to make the score I would never think about this song they, they, they put uh, on the scene and they approached me to, after having been trying to replace it for months and, was, and not succeed in it, they approached me to, to, to buy the cue and I think if the temp is perfect and it's it can be both. I think it's uh, it worth to try it. But if it's not, the composer has to ex explain what is wrong as a term and what he can make better, what he can um, make of more personal and more efficient of the scene. And of course, being good, being a good musician and a good composer is a part of the thing. But it's also coming with a discussion. Uh, it's not also what. It's not only what you do. It's the way you present it? Absolutely. Yes, it's also the way you present it. It's also the work of the supervisor. For example, I was working on the Belgium art house film and the guy was in love with the score from Tron, from the American film. And uh, the music was so far from his film, but he, for some reason he, he lighted on the scene. It was very wrong f for the entire movie, for the dramaturgy of the entire movie, but it was very beautiful on the one scene. 
and it was like two weeks of discussion why this music doesn't work and with and we um, show him a very different example uh, and to make him understand uh, and finally two weeks after three weeks after he told us oh I, I understand now that I was totally crazy um, yeah. it's a, uh, it's a I was totally relationship. Crazy. Yes, I was totally crazy because there is no normally a, a music from a very big film, very expensive, cannot f really fit an art house film. The opposite can work uh, with the Hunger Games example. Uh, it's a it's a good proof, but it's normally uh, it's why, for example, you are concerned about the budget. I never heard, I never had in my um, experience. Uh, a concern on art, uh, art house film with a budget because the director wanted something much bigger than he could allow to the film because normally it happened to me everything is uh, it happened to you. Uh, normally everything is in relationship and uh, the the menage a trois yeah of course no, of course but normally the directors are aware about the budget concerns and also uh, what what i'm looking for it's not a massive uh, big orchestra for for an art house film but something subtle more more minimal uh, because otherwise the music will just ir like ex destroy the film this destroy the picture because subtleness has to be present on all the levels um, since we, I think we are quite reaching the end of the session, if, if there's... We have so much to say. <laughs> yes, it's because you are very talkative. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I will be fired, I feel it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much.